And on uh, page 38, let's see. Okay, so let's say this is an Internet Explorer, Explorer's pro, uh, process memory, uh, memory layout. So DLL injection is uh, simply means or code injection, because code or DLL actually code is more just in a higher level description, right? DLL is just you know uh, sets of code, right? So, but what it's uh, doing is, let's say if there is a uh, evil that EXE has run, then it's tried to drop it, the evil that DLL and then load into the Internet Explorer's memory space. So uh, one of the benefits doing this one is, for example, if there is a, a cost space intrusion a detection system, then you will want to pay attention. Okay, some executable that you are not aware of keep running, then you want to, uh, you know, uh, it may kill it or it may, uh, it, uh, it may kill the process and it may even uh, delete the uh, executable file. But if you run it as a, in, on the context of an Internet Explorer, it looks very legitimate, right? And another thing is if unknown uh, executable try to connect to the outside, that is very suspicious, right? But if Internet Explorer, like, uh, Internet Explorer process is connected to the outside, then it looks very legitimate, right? So that's one of the reasons uh, the uh, malware really try to in that uh, DLL into you know, other processes, okay? And, okay, one of the uh, now method, so there is a registry key app init underscore DLL. I briefly mentioned this one yesterday. So the DLL uh, actually specify like a number of DLL uh, paths, uh, not paths, actually just number of DLL uh, names. And they are supposed to uh, load it for the every processes that uh, use the user 32 DLL. So it's basically Windows just, you know, uh, Windows is supposed to load every DL, uh, DLL that is specified in the app init DLL. So Windows, you know, is supposed to, you know, uh, use the app init DLL. It is one good place of malware can, you know, list itself's DLL into the registry key. Okay. And this one is basically a little bit out of scope. So uh, Windows, because for this uh, class, we are using only XP, but again, okay, after Vista, they change it so okay, you can uh, configure such that okay, if the DLL is not you know signed, then you know, do not uh, load it, or even do not use like a uh, app init DLL. But it is just a registry key. If attacker wants it, they can change the value and then they can still load it. Right? But just I'm making a, a point out there is some other uh, mechanism to block uh, app init DLL. And another way of uh, doing the DLL injection is create remote thread. This is, is a Microsoft Windows API. It there is a legitimate API. And the malicious code basically can call this thread and, and when the, uh, call, this, uh, call this API on the, uh, call this API but uh, pointed that, okay, I, I want to create a thread in the Internet Explorer, that, uh, Internet, Internet Explorer process, but start with the load library, right? That's the uh, thread starting point. So immediate, in, uh, right after the thread created, this new thread we're gonna call, uh, call a load library, right? Then this load library also, we're gonna use the DLL, that what uh, the malware made. Right? Then is malware's code, and you will not run uh, immediately right after it's loaded into the Internet Explorer. Right? There's one example. And I mentioned that about uh, DLL. Actually, once you load the DLL, DLL, so the intuitively, DLL is a library. The code not supposed to run by itself, right? It, unless a uh, executable file call a function. However, there is a, a, some special function that is called a DLL main. So anything that is a uh, code inside the DLL main is actually runs immediately right after the DLL actually loaded into the memory. So what malware does, how does is is, is simple. 
malware, uh, malware calls create remote threat with a starting point of those libraries, and those libraries are going to load uh, even that DLL. When the, even that DLL load into the load into the memory, then you know any code in the DLL main we're gonna just automatically start. So the malware don't even need to you know, call any specific function. Right? Does it good? Do you have any question? Good. Okay. And but it's okay. I'm I'm going to actually later on draw a picture. So it, it looks like the most. Uh, Right now, uh, after we actually looking at your samples, and then I'm going to explain much more detail. But okay, and on another uh, thing that you need to pay attention is that, that when those you know the uh, like a crit, when there is a crit, most of it is called there is but some sequence of API patterns, right? Which is that uh, if you know in order to access to a different process, it calls in the open process, then. Then it calls like a virtual alloc. It is a me allocating memory into the remote process. Here is a remote. I mean by not remote as a different machine, but just remote from you know different from the you know, malware you know process itself. So that's just a different process. That's what I mean by the remote process. Then write process memory. This is since you allocate the memory, then you write something here. Okay. Then I would say game module hand. Uh, okay, now I would say then um, it is a common pattern. Like, then after that, it calls like a call get module handle, then get process address. That's what what it means is get uh, getting an uh, address of a function. That's a get prop address. And after that, it calls a create remote thread. Now it looks like okay, so many just in you know, the API names. But when we actually see the API tracing, then you will uh, you will know better, you know, what I meant by this pattern, right? So all goal of this class is we learn something and then actually let's see that what's going on on the machine, right? And another way of uh, doing the DLA injection, there's another API set Windows hook ES. So this uh, this API actually used to monitor certain uh, events, right? In the, again, let's term it uh, API, and it is actually used a lot for uh, by key lowers. But the way because of the way how the uh, set uh, Windows hook ES works, so if you specify basically, okay, I'm going to hook uh, hook a handler, but I'm going to listen to every thread. Even the thread that doesn't belong to you know, the malware's its own process, you can specify you know the scope of the uh, thread you wanna uh, hook into this uh, event handler. If that's the case, then actually the Windows system itself will actually load uh, DLL into other processes, all of them, which uh, whichever the uh, this malware say you know okay I'm going to listen every event. Or every different thread, then the, since the process has a multiple thread, right? This process will go, uh, the Windows will load the DLL, which has the handler function, you're going to load into the every processes. Does it clear or do you want me to uh, uh, explain a slightly different way? How about I, I don't see a slide, maybe it's a little bit com com confused. Oh, good. How about James? Good or? Is it make make it fine? Uh, the description is okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so that's one way to uh, inject DLL using this, you know, set Windows who ES API. Okay. <clears throat> and another method is uh, called code cave. It's just a different method. So basically, what it does is. Let's see. Okay, it is actually very similar to the uh, create remote thread, but the difference actually between the uh, code cave and uh, code cave and the create remote thread is the previous case is actually the malicious uh, process actually creating the new thread. But in this case, it actually used the existing thread, like for example in the Internet, Internet Explorer. If Internet Explorer has multiple threads, or a malicious code 
does is, okay, it actually uh, suspend on the existing thread and get the uh, save the state of the uh, thread and it redirect to somewhere else. Okay, and it when once it finished, then it restore that you know state. It restore the state and then let the using thread so, you know do what it was supposed to do. And so basically, it redirect redirect the operation and coming back. So that's just me uh, method called as code cave. And here you see the code pattern is an open process, right? Virtual allow it was actually the same as the previous uh, create remote thread method, right? And write process memory is the same. However, when you see here, it's a different, right? This suspend thread means it is using actually existing thread. Then save the, uh, equaling the get thread context in order to save the state of the real thread. Then uh, after that, then it actually give, okay, I want this thread to you know, execute something else, right? This is a setting it, and then resuming this thread. But afterward, whether it you know, restore the uh, other thread is, can be done or just, you know, okay, I succeed my you know, attack, then you know, the thread can die or, you know, can, uh, can, uh, it can, the malicious code can just kill the thread or, you know, it depends on the basically malicious code, okay? But at the beginning of, you know, redirecting this thread operation is, you know, have this pattern, okay? Any question?